What's up guys, CP Money here, back with another mini review of the ASUS Prime A320M-K motherboard. Giving you sort of basically like a 60 second breakdown style content, just a little bit longer like our regular reviews. So let's jump into the design aesthetics of this motherboard and take a look at what it can offer. And in that design department, we are looking at an entry level board. However, there's a ton under the hood and the design is actually fairly nice. Featuring the AM socket with the A32 chipset, this guy is ready for the latest AMD Ryzen and also two upcoming APUs from the same product family. We find ourselves four USB 3.0 ports running off the Ryzen chips as well as the internal chipset, VGA, HDMI for again the aforementioned APU connectivities, two USB 2.0 gigabit LAN powered by the Realtek RTL 811-1H chipset. There's also two three port audio interface powered by the Realtek ALC 887 chipset which is an eight channel little guy there and delivers fairly decent audio performance. However, if you do have super high end headphones and you're a bit more into the audio space, you probably want to run your own audio solution. However, this onboard audio is actually really decent for what it is. Jumping inside this motherboard, we're also do getting ourselves dual RAM DIMMs supporting DDR4 technology there, four SATA ports, a single M.2 slot, and a single PCIe 16X slot with two 1X slots for any accessories you do want to connect up. There's also two a single four pin EPS power connector for the CPU and also two a six choke configuration. Do note, however, there is no heatsink on the MOSFETs, chokes, or solid capacitors, so overclocking will definitely be limited by not only the power, but also to the fact that the A320 chipset does not actually support overclocking, thanks to the fact that it makes up AMD's mainstream lineup. If you do want to do some overclocking, AMD does recommend jumping to a higher end chipset, so the fact that there's no overclocking available basically means there's no real need for a super high end power delivery system. However, with that being said, the power delivery system does look solid enough to run all the different Ryzen chips and also to what most likely will be the APUs coming down the line. So overall, power-wise, I wouldn't have any problems here. Also too, ASUS being the leaders that they are in motherboard technologies is also to put a whole bunch of other stuff here. With things like DigiVRM technology, over voltage protection, cutoffs just about everywhere, when it comes to power, this motherboard is actually really solid in protecting their components and delivering really cool features that not all budget boards actually offer. Finally, also too, because ASUS is a leader, they're also too doing things like over 350 different RAM configurations supported out of the box, which basically just means there's a ton of support here, so really whatever RAM configuration you can pick up at the moment should theoretically work on this board. There's also too over 8,000 hours of R&D gone into testing this guy, so you can definitely know that when it comes to reliability, this guy won't be half that bad. But translating those sort of specs and things that we've seen so far into the real world and actually building with this guy, I have to say it's not not half that bad. Definitely it is a motherboard, so things like heat sinks and a little nice creature comforts like right angle 24 pin, right angle USB 3 or right angle SATA aren't necessarily present here, but again we do need to remember the price point, which we'll get to in just a moment, is rather low, so you can't expect a whole ton here. But when I was building with it, everything fell into place and I really did enjoy using the board. Once again, I would like some of the sort of high end stuff that we do find on the high end boards today, but if you are building a budget system, it's not a half bad deal. On the Plus side, for less than $100, this guy delivers a solid package with just about everything you need to use on there, from M.2, PCI Express connection, RAM connection, everything you need is just there. No sort of extra for little frilly things, it's just basically simple, motherboard ready to go. The power delivery system is also do relatively good for the fact that you're not really doing any overclocking, and also to the large tabs on the PCI and RAM dims were a godsend to have. I still remember the days where we had little trigger arrow things that really didn't work that great. Having the nice big chunky connectors on both again the RAM slots and also to over on the PCI connection made throwing a video card in and pulling it out and throwing RAM in and pulling it out so much easier. I'm so happy we've gone away from the days of little levers and latches on our PCI Express connections. However, on the downside, we are limited to one video card support. We're also too missing out again on the high-end creature comforts that are more present on higher-end boards, such as right angle connectors, and the yellow on the audio divider can be an eyesore for some people. However, the overall neutral color scheme is also too not half that bad. Overall, the board is actually a really decent package. Coming in at less than $100 in most situations or around the $100 price point, it is definitely going to be a decent buy for those on a budget who want to put together a system without breaking the bank. It delivers all the basic connectivity you need, including video card support, M.2 support, and a ton of SATA ports for a basic system. It gets the job done without making too much of a fuss. And thanks to the fact that it's 
in an MATX configuration, and it's a little bit on the smaller side, so you can fit it in a smaller build. And overall, I really do like this board. If you're looking to pick one of these guys up, find them linked down in that description box as you can pick them up. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what you think of this board down in that comment section. I really do like what Asus is doing in their budget market, but again, let me know what you think there. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.